Hi, Chicken Bone John here. Welcome to part four of building a cigar box guitar. We're going to show you how to go from this, which is your neck stick, which would previously shape the headstock and glued together and smoothed off, to getting it to fit into the box like this. This episode will be working on the neck to do the cut here to allow it to fit into the box. We're not going to be cutting the box in this episode, there's quite a lot to get through, but we're just going to show you how to do this. And again, all with hand tools, all we are going to be using is a tenon saw, chisel and a mallet. If you want to get fancy, you might want to try and pick up a little plane like that. Uh, but basically, chisel, mallet and saw, and a little bit of patience, half an hour, and that will see you through. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, here we've got our next stick, which if you've been following us, uh, you'll have seen how to glue this together, smooth this joint out, and also cut the headstock scoop. The intention is that we're going to fit this into a regular cigar box. Now, I'm going to show you how we do the woodworking on this to get it into here. But first, I just want to show you the basic geometry of what we're trying to achieve. So, I've actually marked out here to here my scale length. That's the length of the vibrating part of the string. In which case, it's 25 and a half inches, which is the regular fender scale. Now I'm going to be using this, a pre-slotted fretboard, and we've got a slot in here which is going to be a nut, uh, sorry, a bolt, which is acting as the nut. Yeah. I'm going to line it up with a mark here, on the, by the headset, where, where I want my scale length to start, and you can see that that's just going to, I'll be, I'm going to be able to file and sand that smooth. So that's the first thing. And then wherever it hits the box, we can cut that off. Now, there's a couple of things to take into consideration before we carry on any further. We've glued our neck stick up. We need to make sure that the box and the neck are going to be a good fit in terms of the depth. So, what I can see is I'm going to be raising the face of this neck, which is going to be the underside of the fretboard, a little bit past the face of the box. And I can just double check that. Like I'm feeling there, and if I just raise it up, you can see the bottom of the heel is well above the bottom of the box. I can put a little packer in here to get everything fixed, so that's cool. If your box was thinner, you might find that that arrangement was too deep, and you got, you'd have two options, either cut back the thickness of your back strap, which could compromise the strength of this, or raise everything so that the fretboard's a lot higher. But that's fine. The relationship we want, we went touched on this in the first video, is finding the bridge in the right position. And I like it to be visually round about here, so I think that's probably what? About the fifth of the way up the box. So our bridge is gonna be approximately here. I'm not doing anything scientific. Uh, a quarter of the way up, it's a little bit far up for my liking. I find if you put the bridge here, you're going to get very little response from the top. So, about a fifth of the way up. And then if I just offer that up, you see I've marked here where my strings are going to be. And the heel part is going to come out past the box, give me pr plenty of strength. So that's fine. Now I'll show you how that actually works on one we've cut already. We're not going to cover cutting the box in this episode, we're going to be concentrating on our next stick. But you see what we've done here is we've cut this so it's going to fit underneath the top of the box. There are two scales of thought, I'll talk you through them. I've got a neck here that I've already cut and a box. Now I'm not going to go through fitting, uh, cutting the box in this episode, we're just going to talk about 
how we get the neck right. So as you can see, that fits in that slot. When I flip the top of the box down, it fits. I have cut this neck stick so that the top of that stick inside the box and the underside of the top are on the same line. So that's absolutely solid. So the pressure of the strings on the bridge is transmitted through the top into the neck stick. That gives me a very lively um, guitar. Great for electrics, great for a pure strong tone and plenty of sustain. Some people think you should move this next top of this next surface, uh, top of this next stick away from the top of the box to allow the top to resonate. I used to do that. Here's an example. So you can see we we'll, we we'll leave a little shelf the same dis the same depth down as the previous neck, but we've cut this so that the top and the neck stick are not in contact like that. So now this top can actually can probably see can vibrate. There's two schools of thought. Some people think that gives you a better acoustic response. Um, the other thing is you put in energy into that lid and it's going to get damped a little by that. So you're probably going to get less sustain. You may get more acoustic volume. As I say, I, if I do this, I tend to do it on boxes with a very light top and then I'll often brace them to give them a little bit of strips, uh, strength so that they don't collapse under the weight of the strings. You can't really put cross, well you could put cross braces in, but you'd be cutting into this neck stick. So two schools of thought, I tend to go with this one, especially the majority of my guitars are electric, and we have that hard under there, the top's not going to sag or anything, it's nice and solid. Okay. A couple of things to observe on the general setup of this. We flip this down, we're going to put a fretboard on. And we're going to be using a pre-slotted fretboard from Chicken Bone John Guitars. It's going to go on about there. Now, here you can see it's going way past the, 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 the joint. So we can cut this off either on the edge of the neck or let it go you know, a fret or two past for aesthetic reasons. It makes getting the, the if you do extend it, it makes getting the box uh, and the neck together a little bit tricky. So it may be easier just to cut it where the neck ends. Okay, now a couple of very, very important things here. Right, we'll just use a different angle to show you how this is set up. So there's the neck with a straight edge on it, and it's got the fretboard on it. We'll move along here to the neck joint. You can see this heel coming in here. And then at the joint, you should be able to see there's about a uh, three or four mil gap between the top of the box and the underside of the fretboard. Obviously, we can cut that fretboard off. Now, if you look further along there's our bridge and you can see I've got a a reasonable uh, action there the height of that ruler above the fretboard bearing in mind there's no frets on it but that's all in the right order and also if you look here from where the uh, saddle is down to where the strings are going to go there's quite a good angle that's the break angle where it comes from from the strings coming along here and they break over there to where they're to where they're anchored so that's a sort of sensible arrangement if you put this lower down or even flush with the top your bridge is going to be ridiculously low you're going to get no break angle not much sound out of it you'll have difficulty setting your action so with the neck straight in, parallel, and that arrangement, I think you won't go far wrong. I hope that explains the basic relationship between the neck and the top of the box. And it matters not how we've cut that out. So let's get on to marking up and cutting a neck. So the first thing we need to do 
which we have already done, is mark up the scale length at 25 and a half inches. And then I want to see roughly where this is going to fit into the body. And as I said, I want it about the fifth of the way up. I'm just eyeballing this. So I'm going to make a mark where that top's going to fit. Not that, not the actual, if you cut it to the box, there'll be a gap. So it's, it's the top. So if you can see, I've got to I'll bring it to the edge. I can actually mark it. I've got a mark there and a mark there. That's what I'm going to cut out. Now, I'm just going to go extend those down, those marks, so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll do it on the other side as well, because we're going to cut this out by hand. We're not going to use any machinery or anything. So the first thing I want to mark Okay, the first thing I want to mark is how far above this, uh, above the top of the box, the, the underside of this neck be, means what's to be. And first thing I'm going to mark is the relationship between the top of the neck, which is going to be the underside of the fretboard, and the top of the box. And I want a gap of about three millimeters. So I'm just going to pencil gauge this, not measuring, but I can see it's about three millimeters. And I'm going to mark that all the way around, along there, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to go across the end, and then I'm going to go all the way along there. That's going to be, so that will bring that tail stock level with the box. Now I'm going to cut away the thickness of the box, and as you can see, that's about four or five millimeters and again I'm just going to do it by eye. I'm gauging that in and doing that. I'll do it on the, on the other side. So what we're going to do is get, get rid of all this and also we're going to get rid of that <coughs> because otherwise that bit of the neck stick will be standing proud of the box. We're going to do this with simple saw cuts and a chisel. So here we go. Our old friend, the bench hook. We'll just move stuff out of the way so we're not clouting it with anything. We're going to use a tenon saw to establish these cuts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do start that cut. If you're not too sure, you can use a square to get it started. It's not good for either your square or your saw. But there we go. And just like when we did the headstock, I'm going to cut and I'm just going to check both sides so I don't go too deep on one side. And this is going to be exactly the same process that we did the headstock with. Now I'm just going to double check this because this saw is taking quite a big curve, quite a big cut. So I'm going to have a little bit of, can you, if you can just see, I've actually got a little bit of slack here. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to just mark again and I'm going to cut on the inside, on the waist part of that. I'm going to put my square on. It's a bit amateurish but it'll keep it straight. I only need to establish the cut. I'm just going to move it over here because it's easy for me to hold it with my bench. I'm just weight, putting my weight of my body against that. Just making sure I'm cutting vertically down to the line. I think I've kept the nose up a little bit and those are the saw. Okay, so I've got established my first two cuts where all that's going to come out. And now we can just rough cut the rest of this. The more cuts you put in, the easier it will be to get out. 
everything is with these. You don't want to go too far because you're going to be weakening the neck slightly. There is one critical thing which I will talk about in a few minutes about the thickness of the neck and how you set out the heel this bit so you're just going to put some rough cuts through here doesn't matter if these are straight or not as long as they don't go too deep and now I'm just going to put some extra cuts in it will make it, it'll take a little while but it will make everything easier to get out there's less chance of it sort of slipping one thing this is all inside the box so nobody's going to know until they open, unless they open it up so it doesn't matter if this is a bit raggedy when you've finished some are a bit low, some are a bit high it doesn't matter ok we're going to knock these out and as we did before we can either do this vertically or from the side and it might well I'll show you we'll do, we'll do both again so we'll do it from the side but I'm just going to clamp that down might make it a little bit easier for me I'm just going to use one of those speed what I call a speed clamp and I'm going to go halfway down and I can tap with my hand or I can use the mallet and as I said before do not use a hammer on your mallet the, the, the uh, hammer on you don't use a hammer on the chisel this gives you much more control so I'm going to about halfway down and can you see I'm angling it up so there's no risk it's going to split out on the other side and if I flip that over I can do exactly the same thing on the other side I'll just clamp that down with a little packet to get it reasonably secure this is not too crucial just be careful if you're inverting one of these clamps that you don't poke yourself in the eye with that so be very careful ok so we're going to go see, try not to go in the way of the camera so I'll work right handed I think so um, see, I'm, I've got it sloping up so I'm going to end up with like a crest in the middle I'm knocking that crest out now you can see the way we do this bit by bit by bit by bit and then I'm going to go down to the line it's moving a little bit now it's split out here now here's the thing to prevent that sort of thing happening what I should have done is put a knife line through it what's sometimes called a knife wall so let's do that this is a bit of a case of bolting the uh, stable door after, uh, after the horse is bolted or shutting so just using a, it's a ordinary scalpel any decent knife will do that will probably help us establish a nice clean cut and you see I made a mistake there I should have done this in the first place you, know, you can use a, a you know, Stanley knife or a pocket knife got a nice Japanese one here it's like a miniature samurai sword there you go so you're going to put a knife line through there that's going to help us get a clean cut I hope and I can continue 
just picking away still facing upwards because I don't want it to split out like it did on the other side that's a little bit of a mess so I'm just about down to my line here and then we can again if you remember what we did before we using this pairing action chisel flat on the top bevel side up the angle side up so you've got the flat part of the chisel against the surface that you're working and you can see we're coming down now and we're going to go again with this I don't think it's too bad I'm always holding the chisel down to sort of force it to cut but if you notice all my fingers, all my hands are behind the blade. I'm not going to do anything silly like that. And you see, once you've got it, the bulk of the stuff, then we can take it out bit by bit. Just gently, gently paring it away. Until we're down to the bottom of our saw cuts. It's beginning to look okay the other way of doing it we can put it in like uh, I say I put it in like so I'm not going to bother clamping that I don't think I'm just going to but I'm going to be chopping onto this rather than onto the bench itself so I don't damage it again I'm going to go halfway down slight angle back So I'm sort of going to be forming a peak in the middle. See, I'm holding the mallet near the head. I get more of a swing that way, but I don't need much weight. So I'm holding it near the head. So I've got a bit more precision to what I'm doing. Remember, bevel side up, that part of the plane against the work. So you can see we've taken out half of it. We'll reverse that and we'll do exactly the same. Mirror image. A couple of notches at a time. You know, I'd have got away with half as many saw cuts. See, I don't need much weight at all with that mallet. It's a light tap. You know, in this position, you can do it by literally getting your shoulder behind it. Yeah, like that. And it gives you a remarkable amount of control if you want to do it that way. And obviously, a lot of, a lot of strength. Because you've got all your weight of your upper body acting on it. You know, there's no hard and fast rule there's various ways of doing it and you can see I begin to get this ridge I can continue this action the same way going down a little bit going a little bit flatter a little bit flatter I can feel that the sharpness has gone out of this chisel probably wasn't super sharp when we started so it'll be okay for this but with another job, I think I'd want to be sharpening that. And we can go down here. And that knife wall that we've established is going to help stopping that tearing out. Can you see? I'm still working quite a bit above the line. You can see where before I got the knife line it, knife wall in, it had gone underneath. So there we go, we are getting there, and now I'm just going to pair that. You know, see what I'm doing here? I'm keeping the chisel down to the work by pressing on. See, I slipped over the top, that's why it's important not to have your hand or any of your fingers at the other side. That's just going into the back of me. 
bench hook. I'm just paring away, putting some pressure on with my finger. I'm getting quite a sweat on now, so it is good for you. So you're taking the saw lines out. I'm going to reverse it. And we just keep on doing it until we get a bit closer, closer, slipped again there, but you know, hand, there's nothing in the way to get hurt. It's important that you always have your hands behind the tool. When we got this roughed out in a few minutes, I'll just put a packer underneath that because it's tilting annoyingly. There we go, that's better. Again, you see I put my hand across the top of the chisel to keep it working against the wood. We've got most of it out now. It's not particularly pretty at the moment, but let's just check it. I'm not. I've not fitted this neck to this box, but we, yep. See, that's fine, and that's a little bit tight in that box, but that's okay. So that fits, and let's see what happens here. It's a little bit proud, it's still wedging it open, so that does need to come down a little bit. But width is fine. I can see, yeah, there's places here where I can see it needs a bit of work. So you can either you put your hand on it or your finger on it to, to force the chisel against the work. Nice firm grip. Let the tool do the work. You do need to put a bit of body effort into this. But you don't need to bullet. If you've got a nice sharp chisel, a modicum of pressure from your hands. It's gonna, yeah, see, see here where I split it earlier on? Before I put that knife cut to contain it. Uh, we just keep working along here, Oops. working along here, put the packer back under, and work it from both sides, work it from both sides evenly. I'm still a little bit shy of my, my line, but that's okay. And then you know you can start doing this sort of thing, working not across the grain so much, and we can tidy it up. It doesn't need to be pretty. It doesn't need to be perfect. Well, as you got down to the depth, it's going to be good enough. If you want to tidy this this up a little bit, neater than what you've got off your chisel. You can use a little plane. Obviously, a big, a regular plane is too big to get in here. But this is a little um, Stanley rebate or rabbit plane. I think it's a number 75. They're a little tricky to set up, but if you can see, because of the, because of this nose here, you can get right the way in. So I can actually start getting rid of some of the unevenness here. So it's a handy little tool and then to get right the way in here we can just pair away with our chisel and we can end up with a nice tidy job you know say that was picked up on eBay as uh, you know it was brand new old stock came in the little box sharpen it up and away you go Okay, we just want to saw 
this off here. Off here. I've and just got that clamped on the bench, roughly. So I'm just going to take that off with my tenon saw. I'll just establish the cut. So I've got my line there, and then I'm just going to make sure I go vertically, nice and steady, long strokes. And we're only sawing off by the time we've done the saw curve, we'll be left with a piece of timber about an eighth of an inch thick. So, hopefully you know how to do this, how to get the neck done. So in our next episode we're going to show you how to fit it into the box. By then it's begin to shape up into something that looks like it might be a musical instrument. Okay, don't touch that dial. Tune in next time. Bye for now.